Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. I think I need to try and stop scheduling and planning ahead for videos. It's just something always gets in the way. Uh, this is a perfect example. I had intended on doing the videos, uh, the hinged lid videos for the new tanks, uh, but the magnets came in a little too late. There wasn't enough time left over. And also, last Sunday, I went to a fish auction locally, a very good one, and I, my intent was only to pick up some uh, plants for the second row in the new rack. I didn't want to pick up anything else because, uh, like I said, I'm going away. That's actually next week now. And I didn't want to have anything extra for my wife to take care of. But I ran across vinegar eels. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen them in a while. They're very, very easy to culture. And I really couldn't pass up the opportunity. So I, because I have to culture them up right away, I thought I would start off by doing a video about that. And then, like I said, I'm planning on going away. It's next Wednesday. And I just simply ran out of time. I mean, literally. <laughs> Unless I decided to cut it off uh, the amounts of time to actually get to sleep, there is literally no extra time in the day. And I just finally find out, found out what the limit of, of actual time was. There's just no way I was going to be able to get anything else done. Oh, <laughs> This is my cat, by the way. He's, he's always helping out in videos. Or at least making sure I don't screw up too badly. So what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to show you how easy this is to culture. Uh, harvesting is a not as easy as culturing. But if you've never cultured anything before, any kind of live food, vinegar eels are probably the perfect way to start. Uh, the culturing method is super simple. You notice I've got uh, three wide mouth containers there. All you need is something along those lines. Pop bottles, two liter pop bottles are fine as well. You don't have to really worry about the too much. Uh, those are the magnets, by the way. They finally they're here, so hopefully I'll get that done. Then you need dechlorinated water. That barrel you saw in the beginning is my uh, water for uh, when I'm setting up tanks that are a little bit more picky. It's uh, uh, RO water, it's also runs through a carbon filter and uh, deionized. You don't have to go to that extreme. Uh, you could probably just use tap water with a little bit of dechlorinator in it and you'll be fine. So it, it's roughly 50%. Uh, oh, this is funny. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> he stuck his nose in vinegar and got a snoot full of vinegar and he didn't like it. He'll be back in a few minutes anyway because he never learns. But anyway. So what you do is you take 50% uh, dechlorinated water, 50% vinegar. Uh, I'm using apple cider vinegar here. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any other variety of, that you can use for it. I've never really tried. Uh, but because I'm using apples uh, as the part of the food source, uh, it was just a natural pair for that. So you fill them up. Uh, you don't fill them all the way, of course. Uh, you want a little bit of room for oxygen exchange. And then it's just a matter of pouring in, or sorry, dividing up the culture. I always culture more than one. I never culture one thing, just in case something goes wrong with it, something gets in there and contaminates it. And sometimes uh, it's just weird that certain cultures just don't take off. Even with my microworm cultures, I keep at least a few going at all times, uh, just in case. And every now and then you'll get one that just doesn't thrive. And this is just an easy way of just <laughs> playing the odds and making sure you always have some around. So there you go, that's how hard that is. And then all you need to do is slice up a bit of apple, uh, put that in there, and uh, pour in the culture, and then uh, just wait a while. And I'll show you how you harvest them uh, as we get closer to the end of the video. Now I've been hinting at this trip for quite some time, uh, and finally I'm gonna tell you what's going on. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm heading to uh, Tokyo. I've been planning this trip with my kids for Oh, it must be at least a couple years now because uh, my son uh, was taking history in university and he's just finishing up and he got, <laughs> well, he's planning on going into the JET program, which is teaching English in, uh, in Japan. And it just came up that the, one of his profs uh, liked, uh, well, sort of would schedule trips there every now and then the whole and the, he, he was planning on doing one for the history department and they were all supposed to go uh, but it fell through for some uh, personal reasons I can't remember what they were 
but that got the bug in my son's head and my daughter is uh, really thrilled about it as well so uh, we've been planning this now for well like firmly for about a year and a half for sure and uh, we're finally gonna go for two weeks and I intend on uh, doing a lot of videoing uh, like not enough that I could not enjoy my time there uh, but I'm gonna take a fair amount of footage uh, I will incorporate some of those into videos I plan on going to at least one or two pet stores, uh, and also other sort of fish-related things. You can tell the, my cat doesn't really <laughs> learn his lessons. He wants to come and see what's going on again. Uh, but he's, you know, he keeps me, uh, <laughs> me honest when I'm doing my videos for sure. So yeah, that's as hard as that is uh, to culture, and uh, I just have to put some lids on these. And like I said, I'm going to try and... I'm not sure how much interest there's going to be in uh, well, me doing videos of uh, Japan and stuff, but we'll play it by ear. I'll um, I'll probably do one solid video of it, see if anyone cares or are interested in it, and then I'll probably just put bits and pieces at the end of videos every now and then, just to, <laughs> if nothing else, <laughs> show you what I did. Uh, there's an awful lot to do there, and it's going to be a very busy two weeks, but it's, it should be a lot of fun. Now the easiest thing to do for capping these things would be just to take a piece of cloth and an elastic and just put it around the top. But these lids are really cool, uh, so I thought I would just drill a quick hole through them. And because, you know, I make things I had to show you the lathe because I, you know, because I have to. And uh, it's going to put that on the top. Now the material I chose to... Uh, cat, no, I'm sorry, my cat again. Every time I get up, he decides he needs, it's his chair, so he sits in it, and then, of course, he doesn't get out unless I give him a good pet. And then, <laughs> anyway. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same, uh, it's called Crinlin, and I use that, it's, uh, it's polyester, so it won't, uh, uh, like, rot or anything else. And I used it for the diatom filter, it has a very fine pour to it. And that's kind of important because you don't want any uh, bugs getting in here, like fruit flies or anything, because they'd love this. And, and that would really throw off a culture. So this is the material. I just cut a square of it. Then it's a simple matter of just popping it on top and uh, screwing down the lid. It's, uh, like I said, very straightforward, very easy. And that is the culture's done. You notice that one there that's uh, kind of uh, has a ratty looking hole to it? I mean, it was, like I said, it was very... Uh, pressed for time this week, so I just quickly threw a, a one-inch bit right into the uh, lathe and tried feeding that all the way through, and you can see how much it tore it up. So yeah, you, you still do need to take your time in doing certain things, and that's probably a good reason why I didn't get into any other builds as well, because I'm sure I would have forgotten some uh, important little step and end up with material that was not really usable. Now to harvest vinegar, uh, vinegar eels is a different story. I used to culture a lot of paramecia for baby fish, and this is what I used to harvest them. You uh, put culture down in the bulb part of this, and then you see that porous piece of sponge. I would feed that down into near the bottom, and then layer on fresh water on top, and as the oxygen uh, lowers in the culture itself, they migrate up into the fresh water. And this is exactly what's going to happen with the vinegar eels. You put it in the bottom, uh, you give a narrow neck, and then uh, you put a, a barrier, either polyester wool or a piece of sponge or whatever, and then layer fresh water on top. They migrate up to the top, and then you pipette them off. And it's very simple. The reason why I'm going to build an acrylic one, uh, besides the fact that I like to build stuff, is it's really difficult to clean that glass container and this one is going to be something I can take apart. I glued the bottom on, uh, the top is going to be friction fit and then uh, the narrow neck top that's going to go on top of that will also be that way. Now obviously I can't show you this working right now because the cultures need to, uh, well, <laughs> to grow and then uh, once that happens I'll, uh, do, I'll do a quick add-on to a video and uh, show you the culturing process, uh, sorry the harvesting process. And I made this all really tight friction fit because I don't want to add any glue to any of it. And we'll see how that all works out. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And I said I'm going to be gone for the next couple weeks. I have material enough for one video for sure. Uh, I'm going to try and schedule that to go up. 
But honestly, I don't think I'm going to have enough for all three of the Fridays that I'm going to miss. So my apologies. Uh, when I get back, I will start answering all the comments again, watching videos. I mean, I mean I'm way behind in my video, video watching because, like I said, this is simply just no time left over. So anyway, there you go. That's uh, all set to go. And I will see you when I get back. And I obviously won't be answering any comments for that length of time, but uh, please be patient. And again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video, or when I get back. Bye for now.